Hi guys, this is Leela. Welcome to my channel Leela Webdo. So we are learning about the property binding in the Angular 18. So I have shown you how we can do the property binding to an element. So let's try, we have seen how we can do it for the image element I have shown you. Now here I am using a Angular 18 app. If you try to open the package.json, so you will be able to see this is an Angular 18. And now what I will try to do it is I will open the app component.ts file. So here this is our app component.ts file and this is our app component.html file. So now, for example, let's say that we are having a table. Let's assume. Fine. So I will be using a tr and here I will be having a td. Okay. Id. Let's assume. And we are having a name. So now if I try to refresh this page, here you'll be able to see id and name. And if I want to have a border for this one, so I can have a border is equal to one. So I have a border so that we can able to see a border. Now normally what we can do it is, so here tr and I will be having a td. So here I will be having a name, something like this. Okay. So now the name will come in such a way that it is coming in the one column only. So if I want to get this name in a two columns means then what I need to do here, I need to add a call span of two. Okay. So then you will be able to see this one is coming in a two columns. Now, if I want to make this one as a dynamic means, so what I can do it is here, I can add it in a square brackets. Okay. And here I can use something like it. One plus one. So now this one is a JavaScript expression. Now, if you try to see here, it is telling that cannot bind the call span since it is an unknown property. So like these cases, in some cases in Angular 18, what we need to do it is. So here you need to mention it is a capital S. So now if you try to see here, it will work as like this. So this is some of the scenarios where you will be able to see while we are trying to do the property binding. So the difference between this common point of confusion is between the attribute. So call span and the property call span. So this one, so if you try to notice these two are names differ by only a single letter. So here the S, S is the capital letter which we need to use it in the property binding. Whereas in the small letter we need to use like this. So like this some attributes will be there which you need to take care while we are using the property binding. So now we understood about this call span. So we can also use in another scenario in such a way that so let's say that I have a button. Okay. I will be using click here. So now here I will be able to have a button click here. Okay. So here I will use some beer. So now this is the click here button. Now if I want to disable this button means what I can do just I can add a disabled button. So now the automatically the button will be disabled. If I try to use it is equal to true or is equal to false anything. If I try to use it means the button will be disabled. So that means it is an Boolean attribute, which if it is available means automatically the button will be false. Now, if I want to make this one as a dynamic, so property binding, if I want to do it is let's go to the app component.ts and I can have a property something like is disabled is equal to true. Let's assume. Now this property, if I want to use it dynamically here means you can use it something like a property binding here in the square brackets and here you can use it is disabled directly. Now automatically this one is disabled. Now here in the programmatic way. So if I try to make it as a false, now this one will be enabled. Why? Because is disabled is false. Now this one is enabled. So like this, you can also attribute, you can also add it to the Boolean attributes in this way. Not only this one, we can also set the property for a directive also. So let's assume that we have some uh, directives. Uh, what I can say is see what I can tell is inbuilt directives we are having like ng class, which will try to I, I will try to explain you that one. Let's say that I am having some classes. OK, so here I'll be having some classes like BG color hyphen green. OK, and color hyphen green. Let's assume. So these two are the classes which I am having. Let's try to implement those classes. So here I will try to do it. So what are those things color hyphen red? I will try to use color hyphen red. Now, if I go to the CSS file, BG color hyphen green, I will use it. So that means this one is background color green. And the last one is the color hyphen red. So these are the two things which we will be having color hyphen red. Now, if I try to use it color red, now you will be able to see this one. Let's assume that in our app component.html, the same thing. So I will try to copy this one and I will paste it down instead of having a button. What I will try to do it is instead of having a button, I will have a one development. Okay. 
and here I will give something like Lila Web Dev. Okay. Now here, what we are trying to see here, we are able to see a text. Now, if I want to apply the classes, means I can apply the class here in such a way that class is equal to bg color hyphen green and color hyphen red. I can use it like this. Now you'll be able to see the color has been applied. So if I want to apply these classes directly dynamically means through the component properties or component instances. So these classes, you can directly use it for this one. So for this one, you need to use the ng class directive. Okay, ng class directive. And for this one, you need to give it as something like this. Now here you can employ the classes directly. Now automatically the same thing will be applied. So this is how you can also use the another way of for using the proper uh, sorry uh, directive uh, for the property binding for a directive and not only this one so we can also use the property binding for the component also let's try to i will try to show you so here i am creating a component items list let's assume so i am creating an items list so uh, if i create an items list so let's try to create so this is a standalone component so what is the standalone components and all those things we have already learned about this one so i hope you have an understanding about these components so now uh, I am trying to explain you about this property binding. Now let's say that uh, items list has been uh, component has been created or not. Let's try to create it. So the component is created. Let's assume that we have an items component. So let's go to the app component.ts file. So here we need to import the items list component. So I will be importing the item list component. So after importing this item list component, so you can directly use this one. So here directly like this. So now here I will try to add it. App hyphen items hyphen list. Okay. So this is the component which we need to use it. So now here you'll be able to see the component is reflecting. Now if I want to send the data, some properties to this one means, for example, let's say that here I will be having some item, single item, let's say items. So single items. So item one or something like this. So now I am trying to send this item. So here directly from, from the component, you can send it directly items, anything, whatever the name you want, you can do it. I can use this like this. Now, so this property binding, when you are trying to use it, so in the item list component.ts file, so where is this item list component.ts file? And here you need to use the input property, which we have already discussed about this one. So here I can use items is equal to empty. So now the property binding best practices is so here I am trying to mention this one as empty. So that means the input property or the property whichever it, uh, it is coming to this component. So it will the angular will assume that it will receive a string only. So for example, let's say that in the app component at TS. So instead of sending the item as a string property, if I am trying to send a number means automatically you will be getting an error that type number is not assignable to the type string. So that means so it, it doesn't accept the number type, it accepts only the string type. Why? Because so here in the child component, we have mentioned that one, it should be as a string only. For example, let's say that if you want to send an object, so we can send the number string or an object. So if you want to send an object means so then how you can see, send it. So let's try to create a interface file. So here I will create an item.ts. So item.model.ts file. I am creating some item model file. So here in this one, uh, let's say that export interface item and this one will have just ID of type number and name of type string. Okay. So these two are the only things which we will be having. Now we are having this item and app component.ts file. So we are having this one also. Now what I want to do it item.list.component. So here it will receive the item. Okay item item of array so it will receive only the item of array now here you will be able to see so it requires an item object so now what i can do it in the item component here items so here i can mention it as item of array is equal to i can mention it like this id of type one and name of type lila so whatever the name you want you can do it so now it will be accepted. So like this, you can send either number, string or an object, whatever you want, you can send it to the property. So this is the best practices, property binding best practices. So by following these uh, few guidelines, so you can use property binding in a way that helps you reduce bugs and keep your code readable. So this is what you can do it. Hope you understood about this property binding concept. If you have any doubts or any suggestions, please post the comments below to this video. 
And if you like this video, please do support me by subscribing to my channel. Thank you.